Joining us now from JOS is a consultant rheumatologist uh, from JOS University Teaching Hospital, Dr. Courage Umwago. Good morning, Dr. Umwago. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, good to have you as always. Now let's start with the worst case scenario. What are the implications of, of uh, the mysterious, de if the mysterious deaths are actually connected to COVID-19? This is in relation to the Kano story. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if that is true, uh, it means that uh, the fatality rate of COVID-19 among Nigerians is uh, far more than what we are taught. Um, because if you notice, um, we had only recorded 40 deaths since January when this first uh, when we first uh, had the first case of coronavirus in Nigeria. Mm. But if you are having 640 deaths in two weeks, then it means that at least 45 to 46 people are dying every day. So one day is more than four or five months of coronavirus in Nigeria. And so that means that we need to change our assumptions. I think one of the assumptions over time has been that um, our cases are less severe than what you have in developed countries, um, like in the Western world. So that's why we are having less death compared to what they are having. But if the issues in Kano is actually from coronavirus, then that assumption has to change. And if that is so, then it means that we need to scale up. We need to scale up our surveillance. Okay, we can no longer afford to be doing um, contact tracing only. It cannot be sufficient at this time. We'll still do contact tracing because, for instance, all the people that are related to these people, all the people who took care of them, the, even the undertakers that buried them, they would need to be, you know, quarantined and tested. But that means that we need to move ahead beyond uh, contact tracing because these people did come sick. They came dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that we need to go before death, you know, in, in catching them before it happens. So it means we need to move to the point of, um, of um, uh, community surveillance. So now everybody has to be tested because we don't know who has coronavirus and who doesn't have it. So a lot of things will need to change, okay? And that also means that more people are dying than is currently being reported. All right, um, one of the setbacks, according to the reports from that state, is that the laboratory testing in the Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital has been shut down for some time and samples have been taken to Abuja. So please speak a bit on the challenges of processing test kits, uh, tests rather, at the laboratory uh, level. What sort of acute investment must be made? Well, I, I think that um, the investment is already being made, okay, because... Um, the NCDC director had promised that as of yesterday, the, the lab in Kano will be open. So that means that um, they've really gone in. I mean, this will require day and night work because it means that they need to decontaminate the place. You know, the reason why they shut it down in the first place was because the lab was contaminated. Mm -hmm. um, workers, staff in the lab were you know, being infected with coronavirus. And so there was no way they could continue using that. So that means that that place had to be decontaminated. The staffs had to be trained and retrained. Protocols have to be established, okay, both for testing and then in terms of uh, protection, both for um, the workers and, and the specimens that they are uh, bringing there. So a lot of work has to be done. So I think that um, the NCDC director was right, that they had worked day and night. But the thing now we need to be sure that you know, doing this acute thing does not mean compromising uh, quality. So that at the end of the day, the results that we are getting from that place is is um, is reliable, um, because it, um, the lab had been damaged, and now you are trying to put it back in so short in so short a time. It's not an easy job. I mean, generally speaking, uh, there's been conversation in different quarters, you know, saying uh, we've not seen a lot of transparency in terms of data and testing. How is it important? Uh, why is it important uh, that, you know, we see a level of transparency during this time? Transparency <laughs> is, always, is, is always important at any time, but much more at this time. Because take, for instance, a patient comes to my clinic, okay, and has, you know, symptoms that are not very, I cannot categorically say this is a COVID-19 case, but it's suggestive. And then I ask a history of travel, and the patient says he has never been out of just, you know, for, for like six months. 
I'll rule the person out, okay, and be treated. Meanwhile, the patient had been out of jail in the last two weeks. So that put the health worker at risk. So transparency saves lives. Transparency in terms of testing, for instance, if people get to know their status, then the people around them know how to take care of themselves. If you remember what happens in, in Western world at the time when this thing started, you know, people get tested and they know, and then they self quarantine, you know, by themselves. So they know that I'm a risk to my society, I'm a risk to my family, I'm a risk to the people that work with me. So if you are transparent, you are saving more lives because people are aware of what's going on. People are informed, so they know how to take appropriate precautions. You are saving money, okay? Because if you if you if you come out openly with the test and then people are put, um, are, are, are uh, taking appropriate precautions, you don't need to be testing, you know, um, everybody at that level. So you are able to direct your investment to those that really really you know need it the more. So it's like you know triaging. Right. You are able to go about doing pro appropriate triaging right. if you are sincere with your with your results. Thank you so and then very you, much. You that's confidence and trust in the system. So unfortunately, we have to let you go now, Dr. Huwago. <laughs> Thank you. And please do keep safe where you are. Thank you very much for having me.